So welcome back to the channel everybody. Probably the last time you're going to see the in this carbon fiber dash. The Insanity Labs racing is going to go in next. So the car obviously is on the dyno. See over there, there's a dyno sheet. Anyway, it's booting up. I was just going to show you this real quick. How the recall functions worked that I was telling you about. It wasn't the one I was hoping for, but you can see that it recalls 3731 max. I had one where it was 9656. I thought it was going to be really cool, but I must have messed up and reset it. No, oh, gotta hold it down. And then you just hold the right button on the dash, it resets. Anyway, so there's that. Let's uh, get into what happened with the car. Before we cut to the car footage, I thought I would just go over some of the data log stuff from the 760 horse pull so you guys can see it. 9200, dyno indicated 8500. Not sure exactly what I did wrong there, but it must have done something. Uh, pressure was a little bit different, 19.7 pounds. The lambda is not real. As you can see, it flat lines. That's the wide band sensor dying. Must have got some water on it. Um, coolant temp 169, oil temp 160, air temp 167, running 17 degrees, battery was a little low but still 15 volts, running half the injectors, 170 miles an hour, that's on the 24 fives as well, so moving right along. Back pressure is a little high, 1.228, so... This engine might be too efficient. I might need to do something different with the turbo. Go to a big B band. Uh, we have 100 pounds total fuel pressure. Base pressure is 81. Oil pressure was 93, almost 94. Coolant pressure, which never changes. And crankcase pressure, which is 116 kPa. So 115, or excuse me, 15 kPa. So that's 1.45 plus half. So 2.5. 1, 2.2 PSI of crankcase pressure, and then we're going to come back up to this. Okay, now we're going to go back in time and cut to the dyno footage, and you can see what that crankcase pressure right there actually put into the catch can. Okay, let's do that now. So things that worked awesome with the car would start with the Precision 8385, the Trill Turbo Kit. The Moroso catch can worked like a dream. So that's mostly methanol, a little bit of water, just condensation. And we can see there's almost no oil in there. That came out of the, the new catch can. Obviously the CSF cooling products, the intercooler and the uh, magnum radiator, or magnum cooler and king radiator, pardon me, worked great. Uh, we got a little four port down in there. Everything was working good. And then something happened in the drivetrain, I'm not 100% sure, but it broke an axle, maybe probably related to the fact that it had that half shaft break. Um, decided to neutral out and start making some noises, so I gotta pull that all apart and figure out what happened there. Good news is the transmission seems okay, the engine's okay. So we're gonna have a little contest here. Now the boost curve isn't 100% accurate, but if you were to look at this and see the shape of the power band, oh, we'll get down here, max speed 161, okay, cool, 18.8 pounds. How much throttle position do you think that is? Leave your answer in the comments below. The winner will get, I don't know, free sticker or something. We'll figure something out. So 760, almost 761 at 18.8 pounds. How much throttle plate do you think was used there? Um, and then let's see, getting back to the car, EGT was working good. I was 1200 on number one, which is the hot cylinder has been. Everybody else was between 11 and 1150. The engine bay shot. The mechanical worked really good. Um, I learned a lesson that everybody should know. 
really, really be careful when you go to put fuel in your car. If you're not sure what the can is, don't do it. I made the mistake last night of putting fuel in that apparently had some water in it. It had my name on the can. That doesn't mean anything. So that was awesome. My new radium filter was pretty much instantly clogged. So I had to put a different filter in and drain everything and get all the grit out. And it was a mess. Anyway, moral of the story, know your fuel. Don't be stupid. Don't be me. Um, but I would like to say this thing doesn't have any boost leaks anymore. So it made some good power. We have the Verdine Racing 3000 horse GTR sitting over there. Ran 248 in Texas. Hopefully this thing will eventually run 200. It isn't for lack of trying, I tell you what. Anyway, I uh, hope everybody's doing good. We'll catch up with you later once I know more about what's going on. If you like this style of content, please consider subscribing. If you know somebody that would like this, please consider sharing it with them. And if you want notifications as new content is added, click the bell icon and YouTube will automatically notify you. So I hope this finds everybody doing well. We'll talk to you later. Bye.